Polios is the flagship model in Renault's SUV lineup and is one of the most aspirational contenders the French brand has offered for some time. Gallic style, allied to proven Nissan engineering, has to be an appealing combination, doesn't it? So, what have we here? A Korean built, French branded, Japanese engineered, supersized crossover SUV that you've almost certainly never considered owning, but you possibly might quite like. Welcome to the Renault Colios. It's strange to think that as recently as 2012, the Renault model lineup offered no SUVs whatsoever. Even back then, though, it was clear to almost anyone in the industry that this class of car would be crucial for ongoing automotive profitability. But in its haste to embrace all-electric mobility, the French manufacturer had rather taken its eye off the ball in this regard. Now, that might have been disastrous had it not been for the maker's partnership with Japanese maker Nissan, a mark that for some time now has been setting the standard when it comes to what a volume-branded SUV should be like. Now, thanks to this tie-up, uh, Renault was quickly able to repackage that company's crossover product range and fill its showrooms with three new SUVs, delivering the kind of car that people increasingly wanted. Uh, the little Capture model was first, and that was followed by the uh, bigger Qashqai-sized Kajar. Here, though, is the largest member of the trio, the plusher, more spacious Colios. This then is Renault getting serious about SUVs, but it isn't the first time the company has tried to address this segment. Back in 2007, uh, the brand dipped its toe into this sector with another model badged Colios. This, a smaller contender that shared its engineering with a first generation Nissan Qashqai, but which lacked that model's sharp handling and fashionable feel. It didn't have a lot else to recommend it either, and as a result, almost no one wanted that early Colios, hence the need to to rather ignominiously withdraw that car from our market after just three years on sale, although it continued to be offered in Europe until 2015. Since then, though, clearly lessons have been learnt, and this handsome, almost premium-looking contender is a result, uh, built in a state-of-the-art Renault-Nissan Alliance factory in Busan, South Korea, and launched here in the spring of 2017. Now, it's based on a Nissan X-Trail, but it doesn't have that model's third-row seating option. Now, in some ways, that is understandable. Renault is keen to avoid any prospect of customer overlap with its Grand Scenic 7-seat MPV. But this emission does put this car at something of a disadvantage when it comes to stealing sales from similarly-sized SUVs, not only the X-Trail, but also cars like Skoda's Kodiak, uh, Volkswagen's Tiguan, Peugeot's 5008, and Mitsubishi's Outlander. Maybe also slightly pricier options like Land Rover's Discovery Sport, Hyundai Santa Fe and Kia Sorento. Renault is keen to point out, though, that the five-seat formula works well enough in this segment for relatively new rivals like the Ford Edge, as well as more established contenders like the Toyota RAV4 and the Honda CR-V. Can it make sense in this Colios, though? Time to find out. What do you expect an SUV like this to be? Comfortable, relatively quiet, and possessed of decent pulling power? Well, these, almost any potential buyer's minimum requirements, are adequately dealt with by this Colios. If you'd like more than that, though, you might need to manage your expectations a little. Buyers of crossovers typically don't have much interest in handling precision, and those choosing bigger, mid-sized, volume-branded SUVs of the sort that this model competes with are even less likely to want to throw their cars about. So Renault has engineered this contender accordingly. Uh, they've prioritized and they've achieved a very comfortable ride at speed, although it is one that uh, can feel a little floaty over bigger undulations and one which occasionally struggles with potholes and more serious tarmac tears. Now that setup uh, also allows for rather an old school style of body roll through the bends and there's no adaptive suspension option available to enable you to try to control that. In keeping with all this, the steering's light, though at least it's precise, which should make the car easy to place at speed through tighter turns if you find yourself running late on the school run. Plus, of course, it's effortless around town. 
As for engines, well, there are two. They're both diesels, and neither of them are quite as refined as uh, the comparable units provided by most obvious rivals. Renault offers a 163bhp, 1.6-litre TCE turbo petrol power plant in other markets that would be better in this regard, and it says it could bring that unit here if there was demand for it, but we won't be holding our breath on that one. So, turning to the black pump fuel DCI units that you can have, uh, things kick off with the 1.6 litre diesel variant that fronts up with 130 bhp and 320 newton metres of torque, uh, which can only be had with front wheel drive and six speed manual transmission. Arguably, this is dynamically the sweetest of the Coleos derivatives. Uh, the lighter powertrain weight up front makes this entry-level version a slightly keener companion if frequent direction changes at speed are required. The 62 miles an hour sprint time, uh, 11.4 seconds, is a second and a half slower than it would be in Renault's smaller Kajar SUV powered by the same engine, but the 115 miles an hour top speed is very similar. We think most Coleos buyers, though, are going to want the 2-litre DCI derivative that we're trying here. Now, this engine is offered in no other Renault SUV, and it comes only mated to four-wheel drive and fronts up with 175 bhp and 380 newton meters of pulling power. So, in other words, it'll be a better bet for long-distance highway driving, and it's respectably rapid, too. 62 miles an hour takes 10.7 seconds en route to 126 mph. Buyers wanting to take advantage of the 2,000 kilo brake towing capacity that's common to all the manual model versions will certainly prefer the extra torque and traction of that pokier Coleos. But do bear in mind that this 2 litre Renault's towing capability will fall to just 1,650 kilos if you take up the option, which is exclusive to this 175 bhp variant of auto Xtronic transmission. But that's one reason we'd suggest you think twice before paying extra for this self-shifting CVT auto. Another is the fact that, like many similar belt-driven boxes of its type, uh, this one is reluctant to respond instantly to rapid throttle demands. And that means that overtaking manoeuvres have to be planned with a modicum of care and forethought. Now I mentioned four-wheel drive, that's controlled by this little switch down here by your right knee and is the usual Nissan derived all-mode 4x4i setup. Uh, as usual on such SUVs, it's a part-time system. Uh, the drive layout is one of those that keeps you in front-wheel drive most of the time, but it can instantly react to a loss of traction and send up to 50% of the drive to the rear wheels when that's necessary. Leave the setup in auto mode and it'll make all the decisions for you, but if you don't want to intervene, uh, you can set the car to run uh, only in two-wheel drive or you can put it in four-wheel drive lock mode uh, with 50% of power going to either end of the car should you end up with your Kolios uh, somewhere where you really shouldn't have ventured in the first place. In that scenario, you'll have a better chance of extricating yourself than some other crossovers would offer, thanks to a reasonable 210 millimeters of ground clearance. Uh, it would probably be best, though, to leave the Serengeti to run off fines. Renault makes some stylish large cars these days, although few of them now make it into our market. Here, in the form of a contender we do get, is proof of that. The Coleos taking its place as one of the sector's more elegant volume-branded large SUVs. Actually, beneath the skin, the underpinnings are anything but supersized. This model's CMF, Common Module Family Platform, is shared with the brand's smaller Kajar SUV, which is based on Renault's compact Megane family hatch. Now, the Coleos doesn't look like anything else in the company's lineup. Well, not in this country anyway. Uh, the Espace and Talisman models that provided much of the aesthetic inspiration are limited to continental and eastern markets. Uh, from those contenders, this model inherited its prominent vertically orientated chrome grille, flanked by headlamps that can feature pure vision full LED technology and which on all models feature signature C-shaped LED daytime running lights. 
A profile view displays muscular proportions, uh, relatively low roof line, strong rear haunches and short overhangs. A bright chrome insert extends from the headlight uh, across the full length of the wing to visually lengthen the bonnet, while side protective mouldings emphasize the rugged personality and they separate wheel arches that house hefty two-tone colored rims that can be 18 inches or, as in this case, 19 inches in size. At the rear, the high set tail lamps are similar in style to those of the current McGann, uh, while lower down, this chrome insert set into the lower part of the bumper draws the eye and emphasizes the width of the car. This prominent central brand badge, uh, the neat upper roof spoiler, and the shark fin roof antenna all complete the effect. So, time to take a seat inside. Now this Coleos isn't a big step up price-wise from Renault's other mid-sized SUV, the Kajar, but it feels a world apart from that model here behind the wheel. Uh, the Kajar is like most other affordable mid-sized volume brand SUVs in that you get in and immediately you know you're in a family hatch on steroids. In contrast, as we said earlier, this Coleos borrows much of its DNA from larger, more exalted designs in the company's lineup, and it really shows uh, in everything from the seat density to the softer cushion back materials used for the dashboard and the door panels. Go for this model's plusher signature nav trim and there's this lovely stitched leather upholstery and perhaps a little less agreeably uh, these faux wood veneer inlays applied to the dash and the doors. The other feature that sets a signature trimmed Coleos apart is the provision of Renault's idea of state-of-the-art infotainment. This 8.7 inch portrait style center dash R-Link 2 touchscreen, which is there to bring a touch of Tesla to this family SUV. Now you realize just how much of a difference this extended monitor makes to the cabin if having sampled this, you then opt for the lesser Dynamic S Nav model, which makes do with a humbler seven inch landscape orientated touchscreen. Now with this bigger iPad like color display dominating the center of the dash though, uh, your Coleos will feel satisfyingly sophisticated as you poke pinch and swipe your way through uh, menus for things like navigation, uh, phone functions, apps, uh, multimedia options, and a DAB Archimus audio setup that offers superb sound quality, particularly when it's ordered with the optional 13-speaker Bose 3D sound system that we're trying here. Uh, whatever screen size you end up with, though, the R-Link 2 package that will drive it uh, can sometimes be a bit slow to respond, but we do like the fact that it comes uh, complete with TomTom Live. Live services for things like uh, European mapping and also speed camera locations. Plus, you also get expected features like voice control and a Bluetooth connection that you can use for hands free calling or music streaming from your smartphone. Anything this center dash display can't tell you will almost certainly be covered off by the 7 inch TFT color instrument screen you view through this leather stitched three spoke multifunction steering wheel. Uh, now, this is there to completely replace the usual analog dials. It can be configured in four different display modes with this first classic layout giving you a needle rev counter and a digital speed readout. Uh, other configurable options though include an economy setting with a fuel consumption graph and a streamlined display that gives you a virtual speedometer in place of the rev counter. What else? Um, all round visibility. Well, you do get the raised driving position that SUV buyers like so much, but you do need to raise the driver's seat up quite high to properly see the front corners of the car. And these thick windscreen pillars can slightly obscure your view at junctions. Um, fat rear pillars and small rear three-quarter windows mean that your view out of the back isn't ideal either, so it is just as well that all models come complete with all-round parking sensors and a rear-view camera. Otherwise, though, the ergonomics appear to have been pretty well thought through. Uh, these cosseting seats with their gradually tapering backrest supports, they're very supportive, plus they feature heat and power adjustment on this top model, and they can be optionally cooled too. You adjust them in concert with this centre armrest, which can slide up to 80 millimetres in either direction, and just ahead of that are stitched grab handles on either side of the centre console, uh, providing something for your front seat passenger to hang on to should you get carried away by all that adventure orientated marketing. Other nice touches that come as standard across the range include multicolored ambient lighting and a front cup holder compartment that can be chilled or heated. 
Uh, additional storage areas include uh, this deep lidded seven litre box between the seats with its twin USB ports. Rather small door pockets though. There is a spacious 11 litre glove box, an overhead cubby for your sunglasses and in front of the gear stick, a smartphone sized tray complete with a 12 volt socket. Time to take a seat in the rear and immediately there's further evidence of careful design. These doors, for example, open with one of the widest apertures in the class and they've been sculpted in a way that protects the sills from soiling, so uh, preventing passengers' clothes from getting dirty as they get in and out. Once inside, you'll find yourself in another part of this car that's a real step up from its Kajar showroom stablemate. Now, whereas in that model, uh, fitting in a family of five is a bit of a squeeze, here it's a breeze, courtesy of an extended CMF platform that gives this Colios one of the longest wheelbase lengths in the class. Uh, this French brand's decision not to offer this SUV with seven seats helps here, meaning this rear bench is relieved of the need to incorporate the third row access mechanism uh, that basically the same design can include on a rival Nissan X-Trail. It would have been nice if Renault could have retained that package's seat runners, though, uh, so that this seat base could have slid back and forth in the way that it does in, say, a rival Volkswagen Tiguan, or in fact, in the company's own smaller capture SUV. Even without that feature though, legroom is more than generous and the 289 millimeters of knee room on offer is close to being best in class. And it's aided by the uh, curved form of these front seat backs with their incorporated storage nets. Headroom's not quite so good, and that's probably because of the compromises necessary uh, to incorporate the huge panoramic glass roof that all models get of standard. Uh, you can't recline the seat backs to slightly improve that either. On the plus side though, this beautifully stitched center armrest incorporates a useful couple of cup holders, and the potential for transporting three adults is enhanced by this low center transmission tunnel. Uh, just above that are twin USB ports and a 12 volt socket so the uh, kids' devices can be kept powered up. <clears throat> Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Now, you might reasonably expect this to be huge given that this car's platform was originally designed for a Nissan X-Trail model that had to be capable of taking uh, up to three seating rows. Uh, this tailgate is power operated in this top signature trim model, and it's one of those that you can activate uh, with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper if key in pocket you approach the Kolios laden down with bags. Inside, a 579 litre space is revealed. Uh, now, that's quite a lot less than you'll get in equivalent versions of rivals like Volkswagen's Tiguan and Skoda's Kodiak, but it's comparable with the Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, and Nissan X Trail, bigger mid sized SUVs that lots of potential buyers will also be looking at. This removable boot floor is positioned at the same height as the sill uh, to form a flat base for the cargo area, and beneath it, um, there's a compartmented tray for small smaller items that you might want to keep out of sight. Now you even get this if, as here, you specify the optional spare wheel that we don't think any SUV should be without. What else? Well, uh, there are deep corner bins either side of the cargo floor. Uh, the left-hand one incorporates a useful 12-volt socket. Uh, there's also an optional boot liner that will help to keep this area tidy. The carriage of longer items, though, that's made more awkward by Renault's failure to provide either a ski hatch or a 40-20-40 split for the rear bench. Uh, still, the one-touch folding mechanism that you activate via these cargo sidewall catches, that works well, and it frees up 1,795 litres of total carriage capacity. The Kolios range is straightforward to get your head around. Uh, there are two main models, both five-seaters with diesel power and prices sit in the 28 to 35,000 pound bracket. Choose from an entry-level 1.6-litre DCI 130 variant with front-wheel drive and a manual gearbox, or for a premium of just under £3,000, you could alternatively select the car that we've been testing here, a 2-litre DCI 175 derivative that only comes with four-wheel drive and which can be ordered with the £1,500 option of auto Xtronic transmission. Uh, now, most of the equipment that you'll need comes included with standard Dynamic S trim, but if you want more, a 2003 
£300 premium with either engine gets you the leather-lined signature nav spec that 60% of buyers tend to want. So let's give you some uh, Renault-Nissan Alliance perspective on that pricing. Now, if you were to compare the entry-level 1.6-litre DCI 130 two-wheel drive Colios to the next SUV down in Renault's range, the Kajar, then you'll find that an equivalently specced version of this bigger model would cost you around £1,700 more. That seems reasonable. It isn't really relevant, though, to compare a Colios against something Qashqai sized. I mean, it's a bigger car than that. So a more pertinent comparison can be made against the SUV that this Colios is based on, Nissan's X-Trail. Now, if you're looking at two-wheel drive and the 1.6-litre DCI engine, then you'll find that combination available in an X-Trail from around £25,000. But for a comparable spec with the base version of this Renault, you'd actually need uh, the Nissan in mid range Accenture trim and that will cost you about a thousand pounds more than an entry-level Colios Dynamic S. Switch to this 2 litre DCI 175 model and with equivalent spec the price difference between the two cars would widen to around two thousand pounds in this Renault's favour. The elephant in the room here though is the issue of seven seats. Nissan offers them, Renault doesn't. Now, in some ways, that is understandable. Uh, in our market, Nissan doesn't have a seven-seat people carrier. So for them, there's no potential overlap with MPV sales in the way that there would be if this Renault were to offer the option of a third seating row. Uh, a Renault Grand Scenic would, after all, cost much the same as a seven-seat Colios. Nevertheless, uh, the absence of optional extra chairs does put this Colios at a disadvantage in this segment, not only against the X-Trail, but also against the range of bigger, mid-sized, volume brand SUVs that otherwise would be right in its sights. Uh, Skoda's Kodiak, Volkswagen's Tiguan, and Hyundai Santa Fe, they all offer seven seats as an option. While on comparably priced SUVs like Peugeot's 5008, a uh, diesel Mitsubishi Outlander, a Land Rover Discovery Sport, or a Kia Sorento, you get them as standard. If you only want two seating rows, though, and you therefore limit yourself to comparisons with equivalent five-seat, two-litre TDI versions of the Kodiak and the Tiguan, you'll find that this Renault is comparably priced, but it comes much better equipped. And it will save you around £5,000 on an entry-level Hyundai Santa Fe. As for other bigger mid-sized volume branded SUV rivals, well, there are five more that you might like to consider, uh, all five-seat only models. Uh, a comparable version of Mazda CX-5 would cost you a little less, while an equivalent version of Honda CR-V would cost you much the same as this Renault. We reckon, though, that an equivalently spec Toyota RAV4 would cost around £3,000 more, while an equivalent Ford Edge or Jeep Cherokee would be about 5000 more. So, Renault seems to have got its spec and pricing sums right with this car, which means that if you only need two seating rows and you want an SUV of this type, this Colios might well appeal. Now, if that is the case, then you're going to want to know just how generous Renault's been with that standard specification. So, let's take a look at that now. Now, all models get a number of features that you'd have to pay extra for with comparable versions of most of the rivals I just mentioned. Uh, these are things like an opening panoramic sunroof, part leather upholstery, uh, rear parking camera, and even cup holders that are heated and ventilated. In addition, the base Dynamic S nav trim level uh, delivers 18-inch two-tone alloy wheels, roof bars, all-round parking sensors, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, and heated power-folding mirrors. Inside, there's ambient lighting, dual-zone climate control, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror, and a digital instrument display, plus cruise control with a speed limiter. Perhaps most importantly, though, this spec includes an R-Link 2 infotainment system that's complete with satellite navigation and voice control. Uh, the setup accessible via a 7-inch color touchscreen that also works with Bluetooth phone connectivity, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, and a decent quality Archimus DAB sound system. You'll need to pay the extra for this signature nav trim to get the real niceties, though. Uh, principally leather upholstered seats that are heated and power adjustable up front, a powered tailgate, full LED pure vision headlights, and larger 19-inch wheels. Uh, that additional cash also gets you the R-Link 2 infotainment system in its more sophisticated guise, complete with a bigger 8.7-inch portrait format touchscreen that dominates the center of the dash. 
As for options, well, there are relatively few. On a Dynamic S Nav model, you'll be limited to metallic paint, a spare wheel, and a selection of practical items that I'll cover in a minute. On this signature Nav variant, uh, the choice is a little wider. This particular car has three extras you'll probably want, a 13-speaker Bose sound system, hands-free parking that'll steer you into spaces, and a climate pack that'll give you uh, cooled, ventilated front seats, and heat for the windscreen, the steering wheel, and the rear bench. On the top model, uh, you can also pay extra to have that leather upholstery finished in either Sierra Brown or as here in Silver Grey. As for those optional practicalities, well, you can specify side steps and protectors for the boot sills and the door sills, or you can get all those things bundled together as part of an adventure pack. Uh, there are the usual rubber mats and a couple of boot liner options that'll help to keep the cargo area tidy. One of these liners comes included as part of a pet pack, and that also incorporates a partition grill. Uh, you might also want chromed mirror covers, uh, extra roof bars, a bespoke child seat, and brackets that'll take tablets and so keep the kids better occupied in the back. On to safety features. Now, like other Renaults, this one achieved a full five-star Euro NCAP safety rating in independent tests. And these days, to get that, you have to have a pretty complete range of the latest camera-driven safety features. Uh, hence the inclusion on all Colios models of Renault's AEBS, that's Advanced Emergency Braking System. And that is one of those setups that works at low speeds to constantly scan the road ahead of you for accident hazards. Uh, if one's detected, you'll be warned. Uh, if you don't respond or you aren't able to, uh, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Four other camera-driven safety features also make the team sheet uh, with all models. Uh, automatic high low beam headlights that automatically dip for you at night in the face of oncoming traffic. Uh, a traffic sign recognition system that pictures road signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. Um, a lane departure warning setup that warns dozy drivers who might be veering out of their lanes on the highway. And a blind spot warning system that at speed alerts you if you're dangerously pulling out to overtake. As for more conventional safety kit, well, all models get a trough, rigid body shell, and in it, front passengers are protected by two adaptive front airbags that inflate according to the type of impact and the occupant's position in the car. In addition, there are two lateral thorax shoulder airbags and two curtain airbags, plus the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction, and stability control. Additional features include anti-whiplash head restraints, anti-submarining front seats, Isofix child seat fastenings, uh, tyre pressure monitoring and hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. In terms of running cost efficiency, uh, the good news here is that there's not too much of a penalty in trading up to a larger mid-sized SUV like this one uh, that'll much more comfortably accommodate a family that might have, say, three strapping teenagers to ferry around in the back. Think in terms of an entry-level Colios 1.6-litre DCI 130 costing you about 10% more to run than a smaller Renault Kajar or indeed Nissan Qashqai with exactly the same diesel engine. To be specific, we're talking 57.6 mpg on the combined cycle and 128 grams per kilometre of CO2, which isn't bad when you consider that this more luxurious model is 125 kilos, all the weight of most of your entire family, heavier than its Renault SUV stablemate. Uh, some perspective here is delivered by the realisation that those figures really aren't very different to those you record in a little three-cylinder automatic petrol-powered Fiesta, much credit for which has to go to the relatively light weight of this model's advanced CMF platform. Most Colios buyers, though, are expected to opt for the Pokia 2-litre DCI 175 four-wheel drive variant that we've been trying here, which predictably does struggle a little more when it comes to issues of cleanliness and frugality. Uh, in manual form, this derivative recalls 50.4 mpg and 148 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's a showing that will drop further to 47.9 mpg and 156 grams per kilometre if we opt for the auto-extronic self-shifting box that we're trying here. 
Now that will put you in the 33% benefiting kind company car tax bracket. Compare that to the 27% rating that will be applied to a front-driven manual 1.6 litre DCI 130 variant. As is usual in current models, uh, engineering features like brake energy regeneration and an engine start-stop system play their part in improving frugality. Drivers need to contribute too. Uh, you might want to configure the TFT dashboard screen in its economy setting, which gives you a graph illustrating the fuel consumption range. And there's a driving Eco2 menu on the center dash R Link 2 infotainment display that offers a series of options based around a couple of tuition segments. Uh, these are standard and advanced, and those will help you to improve your driving efficiency. So in standard, you get a score evolution graph for all efficiency related areas of your driving, while in the advanced section, uh, it's all a bit simpler with straightforward star scorings for your efforts in terms of acceleration and anticipation. Uh, both segments deliver a global score for the overall efficiency of your driving, and they also record the distance traveled without fuel consumption. Although, actually, we're not quite sure why you want to know that. Uh, you can also ask the Driving Eco 2 menu for eco coaching efficiency tips, although personally probably wouldn't bother with that because most of them are, to be frank, rather blindingly obvious. I mean, the things like try not to accelerate too hard or drive at a steady speed. Enough on efficiency figures. What about the other costs of running this car? I mean, depreciation, for example. Now, given that the first generation Coleos of 2007 shed value like a stone, potential buyers of this second generation model might be forgiven for harboring some concerns in that area. Apparently, though, they needn't worry. Uh, independent experts CAP reckon that this fresh design will be uh, viewed very differently by the market. And that's thanks to the good looks and that well-respected Nissan derived heritage. Buyers of this car may well make some savings in insurance costs too. I mean the worst you can do is get a 1.6 litre DCI 130 version of this model rated at group 18E, uh, which is not much different to an equivalent Kajar. Uh, if you opt for the Pokia 2 litre DCI engine, the rating rises though to group uh, 23E. Uh, the four-year warranty looks good too, given that most rivals restrict you to three-year cover. Uh, do bear in mind though that the uh, final two years of that policy restrict you to 100,000 miles. Finally, scheduled servicing is every 12 months or 18,000 miles, but as usual, prepaid servicing plans are available. Uh, it'll certainly help that the ecological oil filter needs replacing only every 18,000 miles. The timing belt requires changing only every 100,000 miles and the close coupled diesel particulate filter has been designed to last the lifetime of the car. Normally these days, the reason why you supersize a family class Qashqai segment SUV is to give it seven seats, but not always. Cars from this category like Toyota's RAV4, Mazda's CX-5 and Honda CR-V have sold in their global millions in five seat form. And here, Renault has taken that formula and made it more spacious and luxurious. In recent times, we've seen the Ford Edge do a similar thing in this sector, but the Coleos more affordably delivers much the same kind of package. Uh, you may also warm to it if you're amongst those looking at five-seat versions of bigger mid-sized SUVs like the Skoda Kodiak, uh, the Volkswagen Tiguan and the Hyundai Santa Fe, all of which will cost you more if you equip comparably engine variants to a Coleos standard of spec. Of course, there are issues that you'll need to take into account in considering this car. Uh, you get handling that's even more ponderous than it usually tends to be in an SUV of this size. And if you specify the optional CVT auto gearbox, you get a transmission to match. Um, we don't think many potential buyers will care very much about that, but they might, like us, feel that the ride quality should be slightly better than it is. And in summary, well, for those who might have forgotten that Renault can make a very creditable mid-sized luxury car, the Coleos offers a welcome reminder of the fact that there's certainly enough space, luxury, style and value on offer here to give this model credibility in its segment and a fighting chance of interesting those who are prepared to consider it. For this French brand, that's a starting point it can build from. It'll be interesting to see what happens next. Thank you.